Hello and good afternoon. Welcome everyone to this English lecture series number 79, brought to you from Life Faculty of Engineering, University Technology in Malaysia. My name is Amir Rezanade Pur from the Institute of High Voltage and High Current, University Technology in Malaysia. First of all, I would like to thank Professor Datu Engineer Mohammad Rafi, our Dean of the Faculty of Engineering, for excellent organizing this lecture. For your information, we invite prominent professors around the globe to share the knowledge, expertise, and experience. Therefore, it gives me great pleasure to invite our speaker today, Professor Georg Arpatian from the Amitabhi University of Technology in Iran. Prof. Arpatian will deliver the lecture in effect of uh, in hybrid electric vehicles and renewable energy resources and the battery energy storage system sizing in island microgrids today. So for those who know Prof. Arepatian is a well-known professor in the field of the microgrid. It is a pleasure we have made collaboration with the Amir Kabi University of Technology by Prof. Arepatian and hopefully keep this collaboration in the future. Without any delay, I would like to invite Professor Mohammad Rafi, the Dean of the Faculty of Engineering, for further introduction of our speaker. Over to you, Prof. Rafi. Thank you, Dr. Amir Riza. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to our 79th UTM Engineering Distinguished Lecture Series. My name is Muhammad Rafiq, and I am the Dean of Engineering, University Technology, Malaysia. Today, it is my utmost pleasure to welcome Professor Gevo Garih Petian from Amir Kabir University of Technology, Iran. A bit about our distinguished speaker today. Gebo Gareh Petian received his B.S. and S. and Ph.D. degrees in Electrical Engineering in 1987, 1989, and 1996 from Kabri University, Iran, Amir Kabir University of Technology, University of Tehran, and Tehran University, Iran, respectively, graduating all with first class honors. As a PhD student, he has received scholarship from BAAD, German Academic Exchange Service, from 1993 to 1996, and he worked with High Voltage Institute of Al-Wadi to Germany. He has been holding the assistant professor position at UVT from 1997 to 2003, the position of associate professor from 2004 to 2007, and has been professor since 2007. He was, in, he was selected by the NSRT, the Ministry of Science, Research and Technology, as the Distinguished Professor of Iran by IACTE, that is the Iranian Association of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, as the Distinguished Researcher of Iran by Iran Energy Association as the Best Researcher of Iran in the Field of Energy by the MSRT as the Distinguished Researcher of Iran by the Academy of Science of the Islamic Republic of Iran as the Distinguished Professor of Electrical Engineering, by National Elites Foundation as the Laureate of Alama Sadaqawai Award and was awarded the National Prize in 2008, 2010, 2018 and 2019 respectively. Based on the Web of Science database, he is among the world's top 1% elite scientists according to ESI, Essential Service Science Indicators Ranking System. Professor Gare Petian is distinguished Senior and Distinguished Member of PIGRE, IEEE, and IEEE, respectively. Since 2004, he has been the Editor in Chief of the Journal of IEEE. He is the author of more than 1,200 journals and conference papers. His teaching and research interests include smart grids, microgrids, facts and HVDC systems, monitoring of power transformers, and its transients. So that is a brief bite of our distinguished speaker. Here now is Professor Gregor Varen Petian from Anur Kabir University of Technology, Iran, on the effect of PHEVs and renewable energy sources on battery energy storage system sizing in islanded microgrids. Professor Gregor Varen Petian, over to you. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you, Professor Rafi, for the introduction, and also thank you for the invitation to give this lecture. Okay, I will share my screen with you.
Okay. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Uh, yes, can you uh, see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen, bro. Okay, then I will start. Okay, uh, the title of my presentation is Effect of PHEVs and Renewable Energy Resources on Battery Energy Storage System Sizing in Islanded Microgrid. Uh, the title of this presentation is like a paper title, but I will try to present it in the style of a tutorial, which can be used later by postgraduate students in order to have more information about these systems. Uh, also, I, uh, at the end of my presentation, I have a section uh, which I suggest, in this section, I will suggest some new ideas and uh, research topics which can be interesting for postgraduate students. Okay, uh, as mentioned, uh, I am a professor of electrical engineering in Amir Kabir University of Technology in Tehran city, Iran. Uh, my country is Iran, located in West Asia. The country is a four season country with spring, with summer, with autumn, and winter. I'm living in Tehran city. You can see a night view of this city in this slide. And I'm working in this university, Amit Kabir University of Technology, also known as Tehran Polytechnic. Uh, the university has been established in 1927 with one institute, Civil Engineering Institute, and then during time in 1958, the name has been changed to Tehran Polytechnic, and at that time, the university had uh, five institutes. And now, uh, no, in 1984, the name has been changed to Amir Kabir University of Technology, also known as Tehran Polytechnic. The university has about 50,000 students in three programs, in uh, BS level, MS level, and PhD level. We have 16 BS level uh, programs, uh, 166 uh, MS level programs, and 68 PhD programs. Uh, entering, for entering to each level, uh, one should pass an entrance exam. Okay, uh, the global ranking of my university is 489, uh, based on QS, World University Ranking System. In this ranking system, our best, best index is citation per faculty, which is 22 in the world. Okay, I will start uh, my uh, main presentation with an introduction and a question. The question is, who are the new players of distribution systems? The first player is plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, PHEVs, with stochastic behavior. The second player is energy storage systems. And the third one is renewable energy resources with intermittent generation. Unfortunately, renewable energy resources result in high uncertainty in supply side, and PHEVs lead to high uncertainty in demand side. Uh, therefore, uh, this problem, both of them result in reduced efficiency, decrease in flexibility, and increase in cost of distribution system. Uh, available solutions to these problems are application of energy storage system, energy exchange with the main grid using demand response programs. The framework of our problem, as mentioned in the title of the uh, paper, uh, of this presentation is an uh, isolated microgrid. Uh, when the microgrid open, uh, opens its breaker, which, connect, uh, which make a connection with the main grid, there is no opportunity for power exchange with the main grid. Therefore, 
for isolated microgrid, we have the following options. One, the application of energy storage system. Two, using demand response program. In this talk, our selected solution is the application of energy storage system considering their availability overall. Uh, but now we have a new question, which energy storage system is better for microgrids? This question will be answered in section two. The title of section two is selection of energy storage system technology. Uh, energy storage technologies can be divided in four groups. As shown in this slide, you can see we have electrochemical one, uh, electromagnetic, thermodynamic, mechanical. Now again, there is a question, which one is better for our application? It is obvious in power system, more than 95% of energy storage systems are pumped hydro storage type. Uh, in this slide, you can see rated power of energy storage system installed in different years and you can see the dominant color in this slide is uh, dark blue, which belongs to pumped hydro storage. Uh, and uh, this is obvious because in this application, they should operate in parallel with nuclear power plants. But the question is for, in our case, is a microgrid. So we should try to have an option uh, which can be used in microgrid. Uh, one option can, uh, can be electrochemical type, for example, batteries. The other option can be electromagnetic type, for example, superconducting magnetic energy storage, which can store the energy in its uh, magnetic field. The other option is supercapacitor, which can store the energy in electric field. Also, it is possible to use thermodynamic type, uh, for example, compressed energy storage. In this case, uh, during off peaks, we compress the air into the uh, tanks. And then during our peak times or peak periods, we can use this compressed air in a turbine and then generate power and supply the load. It is possible to use mechanical type energy storage system, one of them, well known one, flywheels. In the fly, uh, flywheel can store the energy as a kinetic energy. Okay, now we should select one of them for microgrid application. But how can we compare them? It is obvious we should have a selection criteria. <clears throat> the main characteristics of energy storage systems are their select, uh, selection area, uh, you see, we should uh, find the criteria to select one of them. Which, uh, but the main characteristics are power density, energy density, lifetime, discharge time, response time, and so on. Uh, in this slide, energy storage systems have been compared considering discharge time of energy storage system versus the power rating. You can see in this slide that batteries can cover a big area in this plane. Also, they can be combined considering their application. For example, we have energy management application. In this case, we can choose a lead acid batteries. Also, we have another application, power quality application and UPS application. In this case, for example, we can use high power flywheels or high power supercapacitors. For comparison, further details can be used as shown in this slide. For example, eff uh, efficiency can be one of them. In our study, battery energy storage system have been selected considering their advantages, such as fast response, controllability, high energy density, wide range of power rating, as shown in this slide, and wide range of discharge time, here in the vertical axis. Okay, the next step is determination of size of battery energy storage system. In section three, we have the topic battery energy storage system sizing approach. 
Okay, there are different approaches to deal with the problem of sizing of battery energy storage system. The, far, the first one is energy balance approach. In this approach, we should try to balance the consumption and generation in a system. The second approach is smoothing power fluctuation. In this case, we should try to smooth the output power. Uh, it's a very big range of research on this subject, uh, working with may, uh, some of them with the uh, system dynamics. The, the third approach is economic ap uh, optimization approach. In this case, our objective function is cost. And the fourth one can be hybrid uh, approach which can be a combination of mentioned ones. Okay, in general, the larger the installed size of battery energy storage system, the greater is the improvement in microgrid dynamic and steady state performance, both in dynamic and steady state. However, the larger the installed size of battery energy storage system, the higher is the investment cost. Therefore, optimal battery energy storage system sizing in isolated microgrids, including PHEVs and uh, renewable energy resources, the same as our case, plays a key role in planning and also operation of microgrids and result in minimum cost. Uh, in this talk, we will propose a simple battery energy storage system sizing solution in an isolated microgrid to feed all the loads of microgrid without any load shedding. This solution is an energy balance approach. We will try to have a balance between generation and consumption. Also, we will consider seasonal variation of the renewable energy generation and loan demand as well as vehicle to grid operation mode of PHEVs parking lots. Okay, to study our approach, we need a case study. In section four, we will present this case study. To solve the sizing problem, we selected a microgrid as an example and modeled its element. The microgrid is the isolated micro, uh, modified uh, I333 bus distribution system, including PHEV parking lots, as shown in this slide, we have four of them. Battery energy storage system, system connected to this bus, loads in all the buses, wind power generation in only one bus, PV power generation connected to bus 30. Uh, all of them belongs to DSO, it's uh, our assumption. Uh, all of them belongs to distribution system operator, DSO, and the PHEV penetration level is considered to be 25%. Now we should model the microgrid elements. That, that is, uh, PHEV's parking lots should be modeled, battery energy storage system loads, wind uh, power generation and PV power generation. Uh, it is obvious there are many modeling approach. We will select only some of them, which is useful in our study. Okay, in section five, we start the modeling. The title of this section is PHEV's parking lots modeling. Okay, different, uh, it is obvious that uh, different factors affect the load profile of PHEVs, such as the battery capacity, arrival and departure time, and charging speed. Here, the state of charge of PHEVs and also the arrival departure time are assumed to follow a, nor a normal distribution with the average and standard deviation values listed in this table. You can see in this table, state of charge has the average value of 50% and its standard deviation is 10%. In grid to vehicle, known also G2V operation mode, we have the following condition. The voltage must be less than one per unit and the state of charge must be less than 90%. Also, 
in vehicle to grid known as V2G operation mode, we have the following condition. The voltage must be greater than one per unit and state of charge must be greater or equal to 20%. The PHEV's parking lot's load curve is shown in this slide. You can see we have four parking lots and four curves for them. <clears throat> in the section six, we have the topic battery energy storage system modeling. A lead acid battery has been selected and used to mitigate to the intermittent output power of renewable energy resources and sto stochastic load profile of PHEVs. To safely charge and discharge the battery energy storage system, the, these equations and constraint must be satisfied. The first one, for example, state of charge has a minimum and maximum. And for example, the last one shows that state of charge at the beginning of per period must be equal to state of charge at the end of the period. In section seven, we have the load modeling topic in this study, the load profile of the system is the one presented in IEEE RTS system. The load coefficient is shown in this slide in vertical axis for a one-year duration in horizontal axis. In section 8, we have the topic wind power model. It is obvious that the wind power is proportional to the wind speed using uh, these equations given in this slide. The wind turbine model of AN bonus 5030 has been used in this study and its parameters are given in this table. For example, you can see this turbine model has the rated power of 150 kilowatts. The yearly wind speed variation of Ardebil province in Tehran has been used as input. You can see in this slide, in vertical axis, we have the wind speed in meter per second, and in, vert in horizontal axis, we have the time for one year. It should be mentioned that uh, there are many models in literature which con consider wind power uncertainties and can be used instead of our model. In section 9, we have the PV power model. <coughs> also, it is obvious that uh, the output power of the photovoltaic uh, array is proportional to solar irradiation and given by this equation. In this equation, G is perpendicular radiation at the surface of the PV array, eta, is the efficiency of DC-DC converter, and a P and this PV RA is the rated power of each PV array, and G and this STC is solar radiation at standard condition. The yearly radiation variations of Ardebil province in Iran has been used as input, as shown in this slide, the same as the case with wind power, uh, there are many models in literature which consider PV power uncertainties and can be used instead of our model. Okay, in section 10, uh, we have the important subject of, of this presentation, energy balance formulation. The following equation should be satisfied in order to have an energy balance between generation and consumption. In the left side of this equation, you have uh, generation of DGs, uh, output power of batteries, which should be equal to consumption of PHEVs, system loads, and system losses, microgrid losses. Also, we have some constraint. For example, you can see the voltage has a minimum and maximum uh, range. Also, for each DGs, we have a minimum generation and maximum generation limit. 
and also for its reactive power is the same. Also, we should consider the models and constraints of microgrids elements, including PHEV's parking lots models, uh, battery energy storage system models, loads models, wind power generation models, PV power generation models, which uh, all of them has been have been uh, presented in the previous sections. So, in this state, we can simulate the whole microgrid. Simulation results have been presented, be presented in a section 11 to accurately size the battery energy storage system. Four different days presenting four seasons are simulated using load flow analysis. Also, there are other approaches to model yearly load variation. We use one of them, which is simple. The 24 hour voltage profile for the four days presenting four seasons is shown here. We have the maximum value of 1.05 and the minimum value of 0 0.95. And you can see there is no marginal violation in uh, these four days for winter, spring, summer, and autumn. The generation of the digits is shown here for four seasons. It should be mentioned that it is assumed that an, an electric market has been run to specify the diesel generator output power. The total active power generation of DGs for four typical days is shown in this slide. You can see different behaviors in different seasons. In this slide, the microgrid load profile for four typical days can be seen. Uh, in vertical axis, we have the active power, and in the horizontal axis, we have the time in hours for a day, for one day. The battery energy storage system output power for four days presenting four seasons is shown in this slide. You can see different behaviors in different season here as well. The positive power indicates that the battery energy storage system fits active power to the isolated microgrid, while the negative values show that the battery energy storage system is drawing power from the microgrid and is being charged. This uh, table summarizes the maximum output active power in each season that the battery energy storage system must produce in the isolated microgrid to feed all the loads. To cover the worst case, we must choose the maximum capacity required. As a result, the maximum output active power of this battery energy storage system will be determined based on autumn curve. Okay, uh, we come to conclusion, a simple and short conclusion. In this pre presentation, using the energy balance approach, a simple battery energy storage sizing solution has been presented to feed the, the, all the loads of an isolated microgrid, including PHEVs and renewable energy resources, and also without any load shedding. Okay, as I said before, in a section 30, I will suggest some uh, research topics as future works for researchers and postgraduate students. To uh, supply the power required in isolated microgrid, uncoordinated battery energy system application will cause unwanted number of charging and discharging cycles, which can decrease the battery energy storage system lifetime and impose extra cost to the planning problem. So the lifetime should be considered in battery energy storage system sizing. Also, the type of the battery energy storage system affects 
reliability and installation cost and in case of considering reliability and cost constraints, the result of battery energy storage system can be changed. Instead of using one battery energy storage system, the same as in our case, it is possible to use a number of battery energy storage systems distributed in microgrid. The determination of the strategy for using concentrated or distributed battery energy storage system must be studied for different cases. Installing battery energy storage systems at improper buses can cause undesirable technical and also economic problems. So, we should simultaneously pay attention to siting and cost issues. Therefore, the problem of sizing can be considered as a multi-objective optimization problem, which is a complex one. The uncertainty modeling of renewable energy system with intermittent generation is important topic of future studies in order to improve the accuracy of the results. For example, in this slide, you can see uh, the power generation of solar and wind offshore and wind onshore generation in Germany for a few days. And you can see a big uncertainty in generation of power. The retail energy market affects the power generation conditions of all the DGs in microgrid. Therefore, it can affect the sizing problem of battery energy storage system as well. Okay, thank you for your attention. If there is any question, I am pleased to answer it. Okay, I will stop sharing. Can you hear me, Professor Rafi? So thank you okay. so much, Prof. Arifatian, uh, for your amazing and informative lecture. So, uh, I believe we are learned a lot from this lecture today. And uh, let me inform all viewers from the Malaysia and around the world, you are welcome to uh, post any relevant question here. I will be read uh, the question from the Facebook comment uh, for Prof. Patian. So, uh, to kick us our question answer section, maybe i begin beginning one question from me first. Prof, uh, actually, uh, you, you suggested to use the hybrid system, uh, hybrid renewable energy source in the microgrid, for example, the PV, wind, and energy storage. Uh, I want to know which one has the more efficiency if, if you want to compare between the PV uh, and uh, the battery storage, uh, which one has the more efficiency? Also, in Iran, if I want to know, uh, especially in Iran. Uh, I can answer it in general. Uh, you can see in terms of uh, efficiency, we should consider, first of all, who is the owner of the device. For example, the owner of the battery can be one person and the owner of the PV system can be another one. And also it is possible to uh, have a different owner for DSO, distribution system owner. And uh, as I mentioned in my presentation, I have a, one assumption in order to simplify the case uh, with uh, assumption that all the DGs belong to one person. So the efficiency belongs to uh, owner and uh, it is important for the owner to have the best efficiency. Thank you so much. Uh, so we are welcome uh, for any question if uh, it's from the Facebook comments. Not yet receive any question. So
So, Prof, let me ask one more question. Uh, Prof, actually, if uh, we use it, uh, uh, especially in England, if we use it, the electric vehicle, for example, from the south and the north, uh, need to uh, the parking charge. For example, if you use the PV system for the parking, and uh, or uh, you can use it, the wind turbine for charging the car uh, around the road. Uh, if we want to use, which one you suggest? Uh, sorry, uh, you mean uh, using them in parallel? Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, okay. Uh, that's as I said in my presentation, there is a, a problem, uncertainty. Uh, wind generation, we have uncertainty in supply side, and the PHEVs result in uh, uncertainty in demand side. So, in order to compensate this problem, uh, our suggestion was the application of energy storage system uh, in the type of uh, batteries. So, uh, in future, in future, for sure, we need utility scale battery energy storage system or other energy storage system in order to reduce this uncertainty because uh, it is uh, they can uh, act randomly. I mean, the wind power generation and in the same PHEV consumption or, or also maybe during night's generation of PHEVs uh, are possible, but in uh, general speaking, uh, they, they need some uh, compensation method, compensation of energy, and the energy storage systems are the best one. Also, as mentioned in the beginning of my presentation, there is another choice, uh, which is the demand response programs, which is and also energy transactions. Uh, this uh, both of can can be used in parallel using of energy storage system. But in this case, we need a power market or retail market in order to have an economic solution for the application. Thank you so much, Prof. I think we got the second question from Dr. Mahmi. Uh, can you read the question, Prof? Uh, for this webinar, my question is that how to determine the optimum voltage for battery energy storage system. Does the storage voltage have any potential impact on lifetime of the system? Okay, I, uh, we have two questions here. The first one is how to determine the optimum voltage for battery energy storage system. In our case, the study is uh, for uh, 24 hour case. It, this means we have a steady state uh, analysis using load flow analysis. As a result, we have a voltage profile for a day, as shown in one of my slides. You can see the voltage profile. And in this case, uh, the important one is the having, max, uh, 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 having the voltage in the range. Uh, as a, to say uh, something uh, about the optimum voltage, in this case, we should consider, for example, consumption of reactive power and losses, which means we should have an uh, objective function describing the losses and reactive power consumption in this objective function and uh, try to optimize this uh, objective function during our solution. The second part of the question is, does the storage voltage have any potential impact on the lifetime of the system. Uh, also, we can translate uh, this uh, storage voltage to state of charge. And this has an impact on the lifetime of the system. Lifetime of battery, not the system. Lifetime of the battery, and that was the one of the suggestions. That is, uh, considering lifetime of the battery as a constraint because during uh, using energy storage system means charging and discharging, charging and discharging. And these cycles reduce the lifetime of the uh, battery energy source system and as a result reduce, uh, increase the cost of the application of uh, a battery energy storage system. Thank you for the question. Thank you so much. Uh,
Thank you for the question. Thank you for the question. Thank you for the question. Can you read? Oh, yes. Also, thanks for the talk. Very insightful. My question is, uh, from your point of view, how do you cater with high fluctuation of temperature on the batteries, particularly for four season countries? Exactly, it's a good question. Uh, and uh, I should say, this question should be answered by the uh, professor in chemical engineering. Because uh, as you mentioned, there is a direct connection between the uh, condition of operation of battery and temperature. And uh, one solution, one solution can be using uh, some uh, typical uh, rooms or, uh, yeah, rooms, we can say rooms, in order to control the ambient temperature of these battery banks. For sure, they can be used in the utility scale as a package but uh, the temperature should be controlled for the short shoot. Okay, thank, thank you for the question. For the question. Let's me to check, have another question here or not. Okay, uh, maybe I have a question after the day and maybe to contact you later. Uh, so, thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, in the time we have to finish this lecture. And uh, if you have a question, can just email later. I believe the professor Patient is happy to answer the question. Sure. It is a really grateful honor uh, for me and uh, to have the managing this lecture today. And believe me, again, a lot uh, today. Thank you again. And uh, I think the photography uh, has a meeting, uh, has other meeting. And uh, we have to finish this lecture. And uh, hope uh, has a collaboration with you in the future. Thank you so much. And thank you for all the viewers around the world. See you again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye.